Hey guys, my name is Ellie, also known as Tone Shifters. I'm a hardstyle music producer from Australia who's currently living in the Netherlands. Today I'm going to show you how to build hardstyle leads using the two hardstyle leads I showed you in the previous video. In the previous video we made two types of hardstyle leads, a saw wave lead and also a character lead. And in this video I'm going to show you how to use those two layers to stack the leads up and to have something that sounds really thick for your tracks. All right, well, I mean, let's get stuck into it. As you can see, uh, here we have the multi-saw lead that we did in the last video and the character lead that we did in the last video. If I play them for you separately again, that's the multi-saw and then the character lead. So these are the two fundamental things that you need for building leads. You have your saw leads and then you have your character leads. So if we have a look at the leads demonstration folder I've created over here, I've arranged a set of leads. And what I've done is I've used the multi-saw lead and the character lead and I've tweaked them here and there. I've changed something, maybe removed some oscillators or detuned them less or maybe detuned them more or, you know, every little synth is a little bit different to the other one. And the purpose of this is to create different textures in the leads and different roles to say. So let's start with, for example, the multi-saw high and the detuned saw layer. If I play this one on its own, so it's actually the same as the multi-saw lead, except the only difference is I've added in some glide or what you'd probably know as portamento. If I turn this up, you'll hear the extreme. So it's gliding between the notes. So if I play C and then I play the high C, it's gonna, it's gonna glide up to that. This is obviously way too much. Let's take it down to like what it was on, like say 180, I think it was. And then you, you hear that bend up to that note. I wanted that bend for this particular lead. There's not much processing on there, just a little bit of EQ for the top end to give it some, you know, more sibilance at the top and a little bit of compression, but you can hear it. So the compressor is just squashing that sound a little bit um, together with the reverb and making it feel a little bit fuller. That's all. Next, I've got the detune saw layer. Uh, which is basically the same as this layer once again. You can hear that this detuned saw layer is in low register. It's still the same, but I think it's just a little bit less detuning, maybe a cent or two. And I'm only using two of the oscillators. I'm not using everything. And then I've also got the sub oscillator on for this one. So it's a little bit different to the multi-saw. If I play the multi-saw, uh, if I put this exact same uh, MIDI onto that multi-saw, you can hear that. And then if I play this one for you, So yeah, you can definitely hear that there's less oscillators happening, but I've turned on the sub oscillator as well, and that's adding some of the lows into that. But once again, I've used that multi-saw lead to start off with, and I've just basically toned it down, added the sub oscillator in. As you can see, I've turned it up to about 43% over here. So that's another texture for the leads. Now we've got the multi-saw left and right. Sometimes what I like to do with leads to feel a little bit wider or a little bit more stereo, I duplicate that and I put one going to the left and one going to the right. If I play these together for you. So now these leads are completely in the low register. The detune saw layer was a mixture of both the high and the low. So if I You can hear there's the low octave and the high octave playing together at once. Uh, this one is in the low register, but it's still got the sub oscillator in there. So it's kind of the same as the multi-saw lead at the top. The only difference is we've got this sub oscillator on. So if I turn the sub oscillator off and then this sub oscillator off as well, it's basically the same as the multi-saw lead that we had at the top, um, except in the low octave. But now that we have the sub oscillators on, there's a little bit more body to that. And it's doing, it's playing a different role 
in the leads. So they're basically the saw layers that were, that were playing the melody. Now we've got the character layers that are playing the melody. This is basically exactly the same as the top character lead. The only difference is there's the portamento or the glide. If I play the same MIDI on the character lead up the top, you can see it's basically the same minus the glide. If I open it up here, you can see. So it's basically the same glide as the first one, so back to 180, and that's given me a slightly different texture to the sound uh, because, you know, I want it to glide. That's part of that melody. You don't always have to have your melody glide. You could do different things, of course. You could you could just keep it straight if, if you'd like. But for this particular track, um, to be honest, these leads I have recreated from my track called Scream and Shout. Um, I released it a few months ago, and I thought, what if I recreated all those leads that I did only using Cubase and only using Cubase plugins. Um, and this is the result actually, and it sounds pretty close. The second character lead is basically this lead, but the only difference is I've filtered it down and taken off a bit of that envelope. So if I, and there's also some processing on here. So if I take off the processing, you'll hear, it's completely filtered down. If I open up that filter, Um, so then let's leave that back down there. And then if I turn up the, turn on the processing, sorry, let's do it one by one. So we have the EQ here before the distortion. I'm going to turn the distortion on. As you can see, there's a huge resi peak there. You know, like I mentioned in the last tutorial video, in hardstyle, there's a recurring pattern, which is distortion and EQ. And the whole reason that we distort an EQ is because you can create uh, different harmonics and you know different tones within whatever you're trying to do so the same thing when we were making kick drums that's what we would do we would make some resi peaks and pull some peaks out and then distort that and then balance that EQ again and then maybe if we wanted to put another resi peak and distort it again so this is the same concept but on the lead as you can see, I've boosted uh, pretty heavily over here, like 21 dB gain and a 13 dB gain over here, roughly around the same frequency. If I play it for you, you can hear that it's just like this resi filtered sound. It's not very interesting to be honest, but when you add the distortion, you start to create some different harmonics and then you get that high end back and it becomes a kind of different sounding synth. Then I can turn the EQ back on here and what I've done in this EQ is just balance that EQ for my mix so that it fits the mix and that it fits the leads, you know? It's all a big balancing act. You have to make sure that, you know, everything works in tandem and everything is doing what it's supposed to. Um, if I turned on the delay, this is a delay by Cubase, it's just a ping pong delay, very simple, one to fourth. It's not much to it, to be honest, it's as simple as that. Normally I would send, I would make some sends, but that used to be the rule, you know, you'd put your effects on your sends and you would send your signal to your sends. But in this case, sometimes it's just easier to just put a little plug-in on the, on the insert of, uh, of the lead and that's it. But yeah, Traditionally, normally you're supposed to use sends. That's how it was done, especially when they were using big consoles. They only had like a few reverb or a few delay units. So they had to really make use of those units for all the channels that they had. So they would have the reverb unit or the delay unit separate, and then they would just be able to send channel one to it, three, five, 10, whatever. Sometimes you'd be working on a channel, on a track, sorry, with 64 tracks, and you've only got a limited amount of delay units. So that's kind of the logic behind it. But these days, computing power, processing power is so, it's a lot. We have a lot of processing power at our fingertips, you know? So 
So that's a little bit of history for you. Then afterwards, I would add the reverb, which is basically just using the Cubase Roomworks. Um, I like to use a really big uh, reverb time just because I like to accentuate that that depth, that ambience, the, the space of the room, you know, as if you're in this huge hall. And that's why I also have a pre-delay of 192 milliseconds. The pre-delay is basically how long before your transient or your impulse before the reverb starts. In this case, say my, I, I clap my hands 192 milliseconds later, the reverb will begin. Normally you get that in big cathedrals. Um, it takes time for the sound to travel and that's what the pre-delay is meant to mimic. One little tip, normally you should always put your delays before your reverb. Reason being is because your delays, you know, you want to have a clean delay signal moving forward in the chain and then afterwards you can put reverb on the, the delayed signal with everything else. Um, if you put your reverb before your delay, then you, Unfortunately, you're going to be delaying your reverb signal, which is kind of not what you want. If you're doing your effect sends in this kind of format, you're putting it as an insert, always put your delay before your reverb. Unless you're going for a creative decision and you're doing something different, by all means, you can experiment and go, on, go all out on it. But yeah. But anyway, moving on. That's basically the channel strip that I've used for this character lead. It's basically the same character lead only I've filtered it down and then distorted and EQ'd it and done it in a different way. And now that's creating like an extra character to the character lead, actually. So if I play them together... And of course, I've just cut some of the lows because I don't really need it. That's kind of where the melody is. That's where the fundamental frequency is, you know? It's about here, so I've cut everything below because we don't need that. We want to keep the mix as clean as possible. Moving on from the character leads, then we've got the saw chords. As you can see with my leads, I like to arrange them in a way so that I have the leads that are doing the melody on its own, you know, together, so they have to work together. And then I've got uh, the character leads that work together. Then I've got the chords that will work together. Um, in this particular case, I've used chords that one will go on the same notes as the melody, uh, the same pattern as well. So if I play this together with the character leads, you'll see what I mean. It's uh, You can see how the MIDI notes line up. Then on time. And yeah, that's it's, it's very simple, this chord. Um, you can see here, I've used the multi-saw layer. I've turned down oscillator three and two, so I'm only using the one oscillator. And I've left the oscillator uh, one pitch going to the LFO. So it's just doing a little bit of uh, wobbliness in the sound, but nothing too crazy. If I get rid of that, you'll hear that it sounds just like saws. But if I put this back to zero point, eight then you'll hear there's a slight 0.9 even a little bit of modulation using that lfo but really there's nothing else going on apart from that you know there's no sub oscillator no ring modulation just the saw chords and what that's doing is just helping support the melody everything the character and the saws together um which is going along with the same pattern so if i play that together for you Which, and it's also providing some melodic and harmonic information for the for the melody. Then next thing is the high chords. These chords I normally have in the background sitting, so you can kind of you can't tell that they're there, but they're there if you if you'll notice if you take them out. If I play them by themselves, these chords are basically the multi saw lead again, once again, but in a higher register and doing chords in the background. And as you can see, I'm using a Studio EQ from Steinberg. I'm just cutting some of those lows and also cutting a little bit of those highs. It's a little bit too much for the mix. Then I was using a uh, Roomworks Effect Send, which is actually what I was mentioning before, how you should use your reverbs. This is the Roomworks channel over here. So if I then uh, make sure the rest isn't solid. Yep, if I play that for you.
And that's basically just going to sit in the background and it's also a little bit rhythmic, you know, because it's one, two, three, four, it's on the one, it's together with your kick. And of course, the last thing is the bass line. To be honest with this bass line, it wasn't rocket science. I literally just went and got a preset here from, uh, from one of the many presets that Retrolog 2 has. Uh, this one was just the basic saw bass um, and I turned the cutoff down. It's very simple, very simple bass line. Uh, I think it's just a square wave. Yep, we can see it's a square wave. And then we turn it down, turn the filter down, and that was basically it for that one. If you want to check the channel strip, there's nothing really on the channel strip. It's just a simple EQ, just boosting a little bit of those low mids for the bass line so it sticks out a bit more. That's kind of it, to be honest. They're the leads. And together with the kick, of course, uh, we mute the bass line when it comes to the kick. And if there are any low notes in your chords, we also either mute them or we can just EQ them out on the drop only. So that's basically how you build those leads using only these two layers. I hope this demonstration has been educational for you. I hope you've learned something from it and I hope it gives you some tools to actually go out and make your own leads using Cubase. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.